I suppose I wouldn't be writing poetry if I didn't believe that it could make a difference to at least the terms with which we engage with the world around us, and that includes science. One of the things that interested me about the mapping of the genome uh, and genetics in general is that it's comparatively quite a new science. I mean, the mapping of the genome is only just complete, uh, and, and the second stage of understanding what it means is still going on. And therefore, the metaphors still haven't been hammered down. Um, as soon as science is translated from the, 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 the scientific community to the rest of us, like me, uh, metaphors are used, like mapping uh, in, the, in the context of the genome. But nonetheless, it's still new territory. It's, it's like looking out at a lawn covered with snow, and it's for anyone to make the first steps out there. So I think the way in which we now define terms as a society for genetics is all up for grabs, and poetry is a part of that. This is a poem about the mapping of the genome, and specifically it's about what is and isn't contained in our genetic map. It's called The Box. In case of catastrophe, winter can be recreated from this skeleton of leaf. All the bitter subtleties of crabapple are tangled here, as is the DNA of dew point, calibration of the second when a tree lets go, the recipe for clouds on the horizon like a new-born mountain range, like north itself. And with the leaf, this relic box contains a hair curl from a child to reconstruct humanity, though all the lights and currents of his soul are lost to us. Spores, antennae, claws, the box will hold all evolution. It will be full and empty. <laughs>